Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at E Trailer, and today we're going to take a look at the Kurt trailer wiring harness on a 2020 Ford Explorer. Now this is important if you plan on pulling any trailers or accessories from your hitch that might need wiring. And what that's going to do is going to send your brake signal from the vehicle to the trailer so when people are behind you they can see your turn signals and keep you safe and legal when braking. So we ran this in vehicle, but when you're ready to use it, you can simply close the hatch on here and hook it up to your trailer. In the future, if you want to, you can always run this out and mount it to a bracket, which we have here at eTrailer. But let's take a closer look at it inside. So we have this wired up here and we managed to put it in this compartment. So it's out of the way when not using, and whenever you need to use it, simple as running that out and closing your hatch, and you're good to go. So the way this system works is by having two piggybacks that tee off to your factory brake lights. And what that's gonna do is send the signal to the trailer through that. You also have a module box and fuse that's gonna keep your vehicle from shorting out. Installation of this is pretty straightforward. You are gonna have to be under your vehicle to run the power wire up to your battery, but with a little bit of ground clearance and maybe a creeper, you should be able to do this in your driveway. And I'm gonna walk you through how to do it. So let's take a look at that. Okay, to begin our install, we're gonna go ahead and get access to our spare tire. So that's gonna be removing just your inner panels. Now, the next step you're gonna to wanna to do is on this little hook here. This actually has a clip. So I'm gonna use a trim panel removal tool, which we have here at eTrailer. You can use a flathead screwdriver or any way to pry that up. Once that pops up, you're gonna see there's an eight millimeter bolt there, and we're gonna go ahead and remove that. So we're gonna repeat that process on the passenger side. And then once we have both of those out, this center threshold plastic is going to pop out. So just be careful with it because it is clips, but lift up, working each side. And it might get hung up on the rubber seal here, but it should come out. Now be careful because you do have a plug here, so don't pull too hard on it. And we're gonna go ahead and remove that clip. So with that center threshold out, we're gonna go ahead and pull this side panel. And again, just kind of grab underneath it and pull it straight up, kind of working your way. And that should come out like that. We're gonna also repeat this process on the passenger side. Okay, so on the inside panel here, you're gonna see this little hook and that's gonna be for your cargo net. So we're gonna remove that. And so what I'm doing with a pair of pliers, I put a paper towel around it. You can use tape around the jaws as well. And that way you're not scratching up the plastic. So you bite onto there, not too tight. And this actually twists. So be careful because it is plastic, but it is threaded. So once you get it moving, that should come out. And then we'll repeat the process on the other side. So with that off, we should be able to pull our panel back here. So you're gonna reach your hand behind to kind of push it forward and work your fingers around the edge. And what you're looking for is access to the plug. Now the plug is right around the corner here. So without removing the whole entire panel, just reach around there and you're gonna feel it. Now on the passenger side, it might get a little tricky because you do have this cargo light and 12 volt outlet and there is a bracket. So just be careful on your plastic that you're not bending it and causing crease marks. So I'm pushing the tab and it should pull straight down. like that and repeat the process on the other side. Before we get the harness clipped into anything, we have our power wire here and this is gonna have to run to the battery of the car. So to make it a little bit easier on our driver's side here, we're gonna poke that power wire through this grommet and run it up. So way to do that is take a knife and put a small X. Now you can feed your wire through and give yourself enough to where it won't pull out. For this current installation, we're gonna be keeping our plug inside the vehicle. So this is gonna work great for us. If you were to run your four pole through down to your hitch, you can use this larger grommet in the rear to run that through. So now we have our harness here and you see our black wire, 
with the exposed wire. Now we're gonna attach this to the end of the power wire. So find your end and strip this back. And then using the installed butt connector in the kit, we're gonna fuse these together here. Okay, and after you get your second crimp, it's important to check to make sure that they're not gonna come loose. So I'll give a little tug, make sure they don't pop out. And I actually, I'm gonna go over here and wrap electrical tape over it just to ensure that it's a good connection. So I have the harness laid out here. The green wire is gonna be running to our passenger side. Now we have our other bundle here that's gonna to go to the driver. Now you can also see there's a ground wire. So we are gonna to have to ground this. So as you're feeding this up, it's important to make sure that you have enough clearance to work with the drill to be able to mount that. And if you need a little bit extra, you can pull this tag back and give yourself a little more room. Make sure your connector is securely connected. So it worked out well. I took off our tag and peeled this back a little and I can actually use this factory grounding point to put our ground on there. So not have to drill makes this a little bit easier. So we'll the... Eight millimeter bolt comes out, put the flat side down and feed this back in. We'll zip it up. So now with our green cable harnesses, we're gonna run those up and plug them in just like we did on the driver's side. So I ran our green wire and zipped it up to our factory wire and just to keep that from catching on anything. And those zip ties are included in the kit as well as this double-sided tape. So we're gonna stick this on the flat part of our box here, find a nice clean spot, make sure it's clean, and we'll stick it on there. So our next step is going to be running the power wire all the way to the battery. So I'm going to feed all our excess power wire through that grommet. So when running your power wire, you can run it a different ways, whatever kind of works best for you, but it's very important. You're going to want to keep that wire away from anything that's going to be moving, whether it be suspension, wheels, brakes, or anything hot like your exhaust. So try to find ways that it's solid and not prone to get caught in heat. So the way that I did it is through our grommet, I ran it over our subframe here, and that's going to clear our axles. And then I wrapped it over it and all subframe and suspensions over there. So that keeps it protected. From here, follow the fuel tank. And then there's this under covering. Now there are 10 millimeter little bolts here. And if you remove those, this drops the panel out, which is gonna make it nice and easy to run it down. So as we made our way through the under covering, I ended up poking it out through the inside here. And I'm gonna keep it on the inside of the frame well and kind of using our factory wiring to hold it in place. So once I got to this point, I do have a pull wire to pull it up. So I'm using an airline, which is nice to have, and you can feed it in and pull it through. Now, if you don't have airline, that's fine. You can use a hanger, a string with a weight, any way to get that down here and be able to pull it up. So I went through and zip tied all my wiring up to this point. So with our pull wire, we can pull this wire up 
And my goal is to run it over to the battery, which is on the passenger side. So again, following the same rules as we did before, keep it away from anything moving or potentially hot. So I think I'm gonna go up this sidewall here, or the strut tower here, and run it along to our battery. So I ran the wires underneath here and closed those back up. And so now I have my power wire running back here. So we're gonna need to attach our fuse block here. So with our heat shrink connector, we will attach that. And then on the other end of the fuse block, you're gonna put your ring terminal. Check all your connections. And now I'll go back with the heat gun and cinch this up. We're gonna go ahead and disconnect the negative terminal on our battery and make sure that's setting away to where it doesn't make contact again because we're gonna be taking off the power to run our ring terminal to it. I used our plastic shield to actually create a barrier, that way the negative doesn't make contact. You then have this 10 millimeter on your battery terminal and we're gonna slip the ring connector on there and tighten it back down. All right, now we have our fuse and we can place this in. All right, with our fuse in now, I'm gonna put my panel back in place. So we have our power hooked up. Now we have our tester. We're gonna make sure that our system works. All right, so our headlights are on. I'm gonna do left turn signal and right turn signal and then our brake light. Now that we know everything works with our tester, we're good to tuck this away, get all our plastics back on, and you're good to use your wiring harness. That was a look at the Kurt trailer wiring harness and the installation of it on our 2020 Ford Explorer.